Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share about walking in the dominion and the authority that God has called us to with insight from John G. Lake. He was a man, of course, that saw great power in his ministry, saw one of the greatest revivals in South Africa, then would go to Spokane, and there would see it as being the healthiest city during his time period. Thousands were getting healed every year. This man understood how to walk powerfully with dominion and authority. And we discover in the Word that God brought us out of sin and darkness, and He's brought us into something, into the kingdom of His dear Son. And He's called us to be kings and priests. He's called us to reign in life, to walk with dominion. Jesus said that He gave us all authority, and He's given us His name, and He expects us to go forth and walk with dominion and authority, magnifying, manifesting the victory of the cross. He wants all of us to walk in the freedom that Christ provided for you. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You should not be held captive to your past or to anything else, but walking truly in a liberty. And as a consequence, truly being a witness of what Jesus did on the cross. And so, Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we truly want to live a life lifting you up, honoring you. Holy Spirit, come and reveal what Jesus did. And come that it be magnified and revealed through us. We've seen that life manifested, and now let us reveal that life manifested. I thank you, Father, for your word having impact and bearing fruit in us. Open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and give us a hearing heart. Father, we come to receive all that you have for us. And I thank you for a now word, a right word, Father, that blesses your people. In the name of Jesus, we all pray and we say amen. Now, let me start by sharing some scripture. Romans 8, 37. But in all these things, in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. In all things, not in some, not in a good day. But in all things, and God desires and expects of you to walk in an overwhelming victory. Now, let me continue here in Romans 5, 17. For by the transgression of one, death reigned through the one. How much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Jesus gained an overwhelming, far surpassing victory where he made a public display of the enemy and that victory should be demonstrated through us and he gave us his righteousness. And we are called as a consequence through that gift to reign in life, to manifest that dominion and authority that Jesus won, that everything of the enemy should be utterly defeated in our lives. We should walk filled with peace and joy, enjoying life and that abundantly every day. No matter what, no matter what circumstance, no matter what comes our way, no matter what people say, no matter what, because we always gain a far surpassing victory. In Colossians 2.15, when he disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. And if I'm now being brought out of something and now I'm in him, I gain in him that public victory. And the enemy has been publicly defeated in my life. So when I receive Jesus and I lift up the cross, I publicly declare a de declaration that I have been set free, and he whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. Now, let me continue here, but I want to share some stuff from John G. Lake. O God, upon our soul we call the blessings of the Holy Spirit today to quicken every instinct of our being, that by grace we may comprehend the power of thy word and the might of thy spirit. And I like that, because we need to get from the word revelation and we need to allow the word to have an authority in us by the holy spirit we need to let the holy spirit open our eyes see ears to hear and let us receive what the word says i don't want to go by my opinions or the opinions of men but i want the word to come alive by the spirit of god and everything that it says i am i am and everything that it says i'm not i'm not and i want to receive everything that I'm supposed to be and walk in everything I'm supposed to walk in. And so let the Holy Spirit shake me, change me, transform me, because I want to receive it all today. I want to be changed. Hail, hallelujah. He said this, while we revere the cross of Calvary, while the soul of man will never love to think of him who gave his life for us, 
Yet I believe the triumph of the Christ began at the cross and ends only when the race, like himself, has received from God the Father through him the grace, power, and glory of God that makes them sons of God like himself. And God wants to raise us up and bring us into sonship. As a believer, I was brought and adopted as a child. But there's a call to rise up and be led by the Spirit and come become a son where I am walking like Him, where I magnify, manifest Him, living a life trusting wholly, completely in Him, and walking with the dominion and the authority He gave us. When I was a manager, and I've shared this before, but I want you to get this, that when I would take vacation, I would delegate my authority so that person would cover for me, that person would represent me, and have the authority as if I was there. And they could do what I was supposed to do, and they would use my name, and it would carry the same weight as if I was there. Jesus gave us his name and his authority so that on the earth we represent him, and we should be magnifying him, continue to do the works that he did, bringing him glory. It's not about us. It's not us. But as we yield and allow him to work through us, and we use the authority of his name, walking in the dominion that he gave us, Oh, we should walk with such an authority and victory in Jesus' name. John G. Lake said, It's a long way between the cross of Calvary and the throne of God. But that is the way that Jesus traveled. And that is, of course, for every soul of man, bless God. And we must come from the cross and we must press on, press forward to the place where, as the word says, we're seated with him in heavenly places. We're seated with him seated with him, where he's on the throne, and we get a revelation now of who we are in him because of him. We're no longer sinners begging for salvation, but he's raised us up, taken us out of the domain of darkness, and brought us into this place where we're found in him, seated with him in heavenly places. John said this, God has plenty of time for the elevation of the soul, for the perfect tuition of every heart, until that every heart comes into such complete and perfect unison that the nature of man is absolutely changed into the nature of Christ. And we've been given a new nature. We've been given His nature, His DNA in us. And as we press on, and you cannot get this in a stationary position. We cannot get this by simply stopping when we receive Jesus and thinking that's it. We've got to go on like Paul, I press on that I may apprehend that for which I've been apprehended. God, I want more of you. I've got to be found in you. And I lay aside everything and I say that God, you are the pearl of precious price, that I may know you and the power of your resurrection change me every single day. John said this, no one... um, No one can have the highest appreciation of the real Christian life and the consciousness that the Christianity brings unless they see the triumph of Christ. And the only way you can see that is that the Holy Spirit is allowed to open the Word and reveal to you and bring to your remembrance what Jesus did for you. And you see not just the cross, but the resurrection and the glorification because Jesus is no longer on the cross. He is raised from the dead and seated in the before the Father, the right hand of the Father. And we've got to get a revelation of it by the Holy Spirit and what that means to us. And that He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and that at His name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. This has become a living revelation in us by the Holy Spirit. John said this, yes, more. It is only because we become possessors of that consciousness ourselves. And as we as the knowledge of his triumph grows in our own souls and takes possession of our hearts, that we're able to comprehend what Christianity really is. Because listen, when we received Jesus, we didn't go to heaven, but we're here to live as a witness of what? Of the cross, of the resurrection, and of the glorification. Stephen and his great witness, where he became a martyr, turned around and began to share the story preach the gospel, but he finishes with, I see him standing at the right hand of the Father, resurrected, filled with glory, because he got a revelation of who Jesus really was, and he was making it known. And we've got to reveal that. We've got to be demonstrating that, and it should have such an impact in our lives. We're not here trying to live holy lives. 
We're not here trying to live perfectly. We're living surrendered lives, allowing His Spirit to change us and make us holy, to be sanctified by the living Word, allowing the Word to do work in us, to change us. Many Christians have said they're Christians, but the deeds and the fruit don't manifest it. They don't show a life ever pressing on to know more of Him, to grow daily and, and, and demonstrating Him. John said, Beloved, Christianity, bless God, is the ringing triumph that began on the morning of the resurrection and ends when the race of men has come to the understanding, knowledge, and consciousness of God Himself, where we become so aware of Him. We've got, glory to God, see the resurrection Sunday, see Jesus raised from the dead, see the empty tomb. It's got to mark us, scar us. Many of us have been touched by the cross, and we need the cross. You can't get there except through the cross. And I'm grateful. I boast in the cross. But we've got to go further and see the resurrection of Jesus, that He's not dead, but He ever lives. And we've got to be voices declaring that Jesus is absolute final authority, that He lives. And because He lives, there's a hope for tomorrow. Because He lives, there's mercy and compassion. Because He lives, there's a victory that we all can receive. We can be set free no matter what we're in. Christianity is the blessed victory that the individual feels in his own heart, the consciousness of the presence and power of God within the soul, which makes man the master now and gives him consciousness of mastery over the powers of sickness and disease. All power and authority, Jesus, in me, in his name. And he says, I give it to you. Go in my name. And nothing, the enemy shall in any way harm you. We have not walked with the revelation of who we really are, except when we're going after our own lusts, our own desires, then we use it. But we're meant to magnify, glorify Him, and expand His kingdom. Take back souls to push forward this kingdom on the earth and see lives touched and changed and people brought to a revelation of the real wonder, of the real power of Jesus and what happened on the cross. But it's got to be demonstrated in us. And that comes as we lay down our lives and allow Him to so change us to demonstrate it through us. I cannot make, see, many of people are trying to win people over by their own ability. They're trying to get people to receive the gospel, and they're wondering why there's resistance. Paul said, I preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit, and weakness and trembling, not in my own strength, not in my ability, but the Holy Spirit taking this word, hovering over it, as I yield and cry out to Him and surrender to Him and His fellowship and relationship with Him, that word had a life to it and it produced results that Paul couldn't make happen, but the Holy Spirit could. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2, Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Romans 8, 6, for the mindset in the flesh is death, but the mindset in the spirit is life and peace. There's a new way of thinking, and we're no longer to walk under the old order, but our minds will be set on Him, and as a consequence, there should be a life and peace. I want daily my mind set on, I start the day focusing on God, lifting Him up. I want worship around me. I take every opportunity to put worship around me, so that all, all that I'm hearing and thinking and saying is God being glorified. And I want every time the Spirit just touched me, I'm on my knees, I'm praying, I'm seeking God's face. I don't care if it's middle of the night, middle of the day, whatever it is. God, I want more of you. My mind is set on you. My heart is set on you. My emotions are set on you, God. John said this, the attitude of our soul has much to do with our own, uh, um, not only our mental states, but our spiritual states, but likewise also our physical states. Indeed, it seems to me that the spirit of man is tuned with God. All the outgrowth of his life will be in harmony with the spirit. And if you get a hold of this and the victory won't, it will change your lives. It will change your homes because all of a sudden there's a life that flows from you. That peace oozes from you and people see that and say, I want that. Not the gospel we're trying to force down their throats. Not what, that's not touched with mercy or love. But when they see the gospel preached, and power through a life, living a living testimony. There's a reality to it. So now I can share the word and say, I see that. I want that. And it touches them because daily they see 
daily to hear. People read you. People hear through every body, their body language, everything you do. And they need to hear in everything we do and say the mercy, the compassion, and the resurrection power of Jesus. Our lives have to be living epistles, read, demonstrating that victory. And we should be the most happiest people in the world because we have a hope that's an anchor for our soul that goes beyond the veil into the secret place, the safe place. We have a hope, a hope, a living now hope in Him. And if you don't, Father God, open their eyes to see. Let us press forward and let's lay off and get rid of all the old and let's receive all the new and let the resurrection power arise in us, setting us free, Father, in Jesus' name. John said, the reason I always endeavored in my preaching to bring before the, man, the mind of man the consciousness of triumph, the consciousness of victory, the power of mastery is because of this. Because he understands the importance of what the mind's set on. That you've got to get a greater revelation of a dominion and authority won through Jesus. It's not because of me. It's because I know Jesus and I've walked with Jesus. And because I walk with him, his authority begins to ooze on me. I realize who I am in him. I realize more and more daily who he is in me. And that this is a temple and he reigns. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let it grow in us. Let it develop in us. It's greater. The greater one that's in you. Greater than your emotions. Greater than your hurts. Greater than no matter what. He's greater. And you can trust in him. And if you will stop holding on, but rather present it and yield it to him and make him bigger and give it over even if it's a baptism of tears surrender this day all those things that have held you captive it held you and allow him to be lord because i want everything in my whole life and being to be focused and built around him understanding he set me free and i want to walk in the dominion and the authority that he's given me john said this the real christian is a real is a royal fighter he is the one who loves to enter into the contest with his whole soul and take the situation captive for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should now have a boldness because we now know who we are, a revelation of being made righteous. And I mean, when we get up in the morning, the devil should be praying for a rapture, saying, God, take them out. I just want them gone. You should cause the devil to have a heart attack every morning you get up. He doesn't want to come near you because of what you might do. Because he is, you have a revelation of who you are. And you press forward and you press on. And no matter what he throws at you, you're always walking in victory because you are in him. Kept in him. I do not spend much time talking about the devil, John said. The Lord took care of him, bless God. He has the keys of hell and death. And he has mastered that individual and that condition once and for all. If you and I had so much faith to believe it was as we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we would have that mighty, we'd have mighty little trouble with the devil or his power while we walk through this world. If we could get a revelation that we got a big Jesus and a small devil, and that it only takes the same faith that it took to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior to gain that victory, to walk with authority, because it's by faith. It's a grace thing received by faith. I have a righteousness because Jesus gave it. It's his righteousness, and I receive it by faith. I have an authority by faith. Hallelujah, because of you, Jesus. It is a hard thing for the Christian mind to conceive that the power of evil is really a vanquished power. Holy Spirit, get us a revelation of that, because so many of us are so convinced of all these witchcraft prayers and all these things that they have an authority over you. When greater is he that's in you, and it's time we said no to the devil, broke these things and said no. They have no right in my life because of who I am in Christ. A curse without a cause will not, afford, will not stick because I'm free in Jesus. Every decree against me was nailed to the cross. And if I'm found in him, if I walk in him, if I walk washed by the blood, nothing of the enemy can touch me. I'm kept by him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, you, you have a, you have, sorry, you and I have bowed our heads before a vanquished enemy. We have failed through the lack of faith to comprehend that Christ is the master. But he who dares by the grace of God to look in the face of Lord Jesus Christ knows within him his own soul of the divine mastery that Christ 
that Christ of God is exercising now. And we see it in the secret place. We get a revelation of Jesus seated on the throne, having completely won a victory. And as we stare him in the face, as we look in the word, and the Holy Ghost opens up, and we see Jesus in the word. See, I don't come in the secret place and empty my mind. I come in the secret place and I fix my eyes on him. I lift him up. I begin to worship him. I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me the word and open the word with revelation. Reveal to me Jesus. Make Jesus bigger in me. I just want to have fellowship with you, Jesus. I just want to know you, Jesus. And I want your victory to become bigger and bigger and greater in my life. John said this, It's the conscious presence of the living, risen Son of God dwelling in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which causes you and I to know that power of God is equal to every emergency and is great enough for the deliverance of every soul from every oppression. So no matter what you face, no matter what you're going through, the authority, the victory that Jesus won is more than enough. The victory and that resurrection power in you, if you will allow by the Holy Spirit for that resurrection power to rise up, there is nothing of the enemy you cannot overcome through Jesus. You gain a far surpassing victory and it's time that we walked in that victory and stopped the enemy holding us. Let us shut the door to the enemy. Let us make a stand today and say no more to the devil. Let us make a stand today on the precious promise of God that they're not just precious promises, but they're living truths in our lives. We receive them by faith. We declare them in our lives. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my life. Everything you say I am, I am. Everything you say I'm not, I'm not. And let that be so. Yes and amen in our lives today. Let us walk with a bold authority. Let us begin to pray because when you get a hold of this, there is an authority in your prayer life that will change things. You're no longer going to pray, hoping, potluck, that your prayer makes it. But you're going to pray and expect results. You're going to pray with a joy because God and you are now working together in unison. You get a hold of the purpose and heart of the Father. And you're like, God, I want to see that on the earth. And God's saying, glory to God, pray it forth. And the Holy Spirit then praying it through you, birthing that thing. Great things God producing on the earth. Hallelujah. And you're bearing much fruit for His glory. Amen. Well, I pray you're blessed. I pray that you're encouraged, strengthened, and built up in the Lord. I want to ask you to help us by sharing, liking, and subscribing because it helps us reach more people. We're seeing so many souls touched, backsliders brought back. You can't imagine how many people call us daily. It's glorious how many people are being restored. But as you like and share and subscribe, the algorithms in Google and Google and in Google and YouTube help this video get to more people and we are able to touch and see more lives touched and changed. I also want to encourage you to consider joining our prayer partnership team. You just got to go to our website. The details are below, godsgeneralsandrevivals.com and sign up on our partner page. It doesn't cost you anything. We don't ask any money of you. If God puts in your heart to share uh, financially with us, it'll help us do great things. Glory to God, we receive that. But you don't have to give a penny to be part of the prayer partnership team. We're grateful for all those that stand with us, praying with us for greater impact because powerful things are built upon powerful prayer. And you're going to have people praying for you. Mm, it's glorious to have somebody praying for you at any moment, at any time of the day, just when you need it. And at the same time, you'll also reap the reward when we get to heaven for the work this ministry is doing. And I want to share that with you. Amen? You'll also be invited to our Zoom meetings. Simply by signing up, you'll be getting our emails and such like sent to you. I want to thank you. And I want you to be encouraged to check out more videos in the series, other videos to build you up, help you, strengthen you, and equip you to live boldly for Jesus in this hour. Thank you for watching. Know that we're praying for you. Be praying for us. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, amen.